You know, I believe in fate and I believe that you met, uh, are meant to meet people along yes. the way or different things happen to you and, and it just, it shapes your road where you're supposed to go. You weren't always a singer, were you? You've come from a bit of a sporting background. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, my whole life was sport, actually, and there was no music in there at all within my family. And my sister had some organ lessons, you know, when she was younger, but that's as far as it went. Yeah, yeah, the old organ. <laughs> uh, and that was as far as it went, but there was no music in our family. Um, so sport was, was my passion. And, uh, rugby? Uh, swimming, athletics, and, and rugby. All rounder. Yeah, and uh, I mean, I grew up in a small country town called Chinchilla which is four hours west of Brisbane, yeah, Queensland. Uh, so, you know, that was um, what you did. You got out and you, and you did all these uh, sporting mm. activities. And so for me, that was my life. Um, I, then, I then got into, after school, I got into studying natural medicine. Wow. So for me, I kind of thought, look, you know, I want to be working with, if I'm not, you know, competing, mm. or the day that ever comes that I'm not competing, then I want to be working with athletes. And, and that's where I was heading. Wow. Until that's... I picked up a guitar. My goodness, so natural mm. medicine. I'm, I'm sure a lot of people would be surprised by that. What attracted you to that in particular? Uh, well, I used to get a lot of injuries with, uh, with athletics and, and rugby. So it was just kind of, uh, I wanted to learn a bit about the body and, and how to even treat myself. But mm. when I got into it, I actually really enjoyed working with other people, or well, working on other people you yep. know, and, and their injuries. So I actually worked with, with a couple of physiotherapists in, in Brisbane for a little while. Yep. And um, yeah, I was really going down that path, that's what I thought I was going to go. Wow, and yeah. then life just throws in a curveball, oh, takes your knee yeah. out and, um, <laughs> and sets you on a different path. So is yep. that when you picked up a guitar? It was around that time, yeah. I had um, was playing uh, rugby and I had a, a knee injury which um, was devastating because it was a, a t pivotal moment mm. there for me where there's a, a possibility of, of um, you know, m making the Australian Sevens team. Wow. Um, a, a small, small, small <laughs> But you were good. Yeah. That's what you're trying so to say. You were really good. <laughs> anyway, after that, uh, the knee injury was, uh, it was all over. And, um, that would have been devastating. Yeah, it was. So, But, uh, you know, I had a friend who was studying with me and we were living together. And he just, one day he just came into my room and said, you know what? I'm going to get a guitar lesson. I've always wanted to do it. And I'm going to go get a lesson. And, and I'm kind of thinking, that sounds pretty cool. You know, I've never thought about music at all, but that wow. sounds pretty cool. So then I actually went and had a couple of lessons. And he didn't. Really? But because of him, he got me started. Yeah. And he claims your whole career was built on him. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, unfortunately, he had an aneurysm years, years oh, later. Okay. But he's a great mate of mine. Uh, I named my first, my first boy Charlie after him. Oh, beautiful. But, you know, I believe in fate and I believe that you met, uh, are meant to meet people along yes. the way or different things happen to you and, and it just it shapes your road where you're supposed to go. I believe I was meant to meet him and, and you know, that's what happened. You believe you were meant to get a bung knee? Unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> well, I kept getting all these other injuries as well. I had punctured lungs, I had fractured cheekbones. And I remember, you know, playing a game one day and I had got injured and I remember thinking, I don't think the big fella upstairs wants me to play this game, you know, because there's just so many injuries. You already had that intuition. Yeah, so, um, and it was not long after that that, it, that all this fell into place. My goodness. Mm. So from there you pick up a guitar, you, you go travelling around the world mm. and get all this experience? Yeah, well, it was fun. You know, I mean, I've always done things for, not for money, but for lifestyle. Mm. Uh, and because that's what happiness is, you know what I mean? We're, we're, that's what keeps you happy. And I learned years ago when I was 18, my dad was 47, he had a heart attack and he, and he passed away. Oh my God. And he had um, his own business that he was working his whole life. And he'd sold that business and, to this other guy and he, and he helped him out for the, for the next 12 months. And mum and dad had bought this caravan, they were about to go travelling around Australia and then moved from Chinchilla to the Sunshine Coast, which is, would have been mm. nice, nice change for them. Two weeks later, after he finished, he had a heart attack and, and died. So for me, I, I learned a really valuable lesson from that, that, mm. you know, I don't want to work my whole life and then have yes. that happen to me. So I don't want to work, mm. basically. So you <laughs> so created I, the ultimate what, job. What job can I do that, you know, is not work and it's, it's fun and that's, um, it just happened that, that, you know, music happened. It happened. Mm. So, you, you, from learning the guitar, travelling, you're collecting all these experiences, you start songwriting. Did you mm. know once you started songwriting that there was something in it for you? Uh, no, because I was really bad at it. Really? Yeah, I I'd wrote love some to hear no, some you of your first ones. <laughs> Give us was, a demo. <laughs> no, I just remember struggling, like, thinking, like, how do you write a song? You know, mm. what's the structure of a song, lyrical content? It was really difficult. So. Mm. 
um, I was just happy playing covers and, and that was a little bit of fun. I thought I'll just keep trying to do this. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, you know what, this might be nice to have a, a career doing music and just doing covers. And then I got a job doing covers uh, at this little bar in Brisbane and, and it was fantastic for about three months. And then I realised that I was just playing to a bunch of drunks and I was like, <laughs> this is not really where I want to be. So uh, I then thought, you know what, if I want to make something out of music, I'm going to have to write my own music and that's where you're going to earn your living from. And, you know, I wanted to travel the world, so that, that's what I set my, my, my goal was to do that. So how many crappy songs did it take to get to something like So Beautiful? <laughs> oh, maybe ten. Is that all? Yeah, maybe not too bad, but That's you know, not still fair. It's pretty ten. I've written about a hundred crappy bad ones. songs, no good ones. <laughs> wow, yeah. that was so all. beautiful. Came quite early, actually. That was. Um, I remember writing that probably in the first twelve or eighteen months when I first started to write songs. It was. Um, that's one of the first ones that came out. And were the, are they always stories about your life? Are they always about a, a real event and real people? Not every single song, but I do tend to write about life experiences, mm -hmm. yeah. So sometimes I also put myself into someone else's shoes and I'll write about their experience. Mm -hmm. So, And sometimes that's easier mm. when you can kind of, um, I don't know, just you don't have to uh, talk about yourself. Yes. Yeah. Um, do you feel like the hardest parts of life, the, the most challenging parts, end up as amazing songs? Uh, yeah, that's true actually, yeah. I think testing times, you know, through your life when you're really struggling mm. with things, you can get a great song out of that. Mm. And because people relate to it, because everyone yeah. goes through these hard times. I mean, a song like Better Days, for example, yeah. um, you know, there was times where I was uh, quite down and depressed and I was struggling, had no money, nothing. Mm. It was really, really wow. tough times, you know. And, um, and all my friends at that stage were, because I was such a late starter in the music, all my friends had good jobs, I was starting to have kids and I, I couldn't even buy myself a lunch. You really? know? So it was pretty scary not knowing what was going to happen. Um, so, you know, I think that, um, I don't know, things just fell into place. Yeah, they sure have for no. you. And look at this, you're selling out these beautiful yeah. theatres and touring the country and you've got a brand new album out, mm. Camacho, yeah. which means cool or the it means, yeah, It's a slang word, a uh, Spanish slang word, meaning the act of cool. The act of cool. Which so you're is, practicing the act of cool. Yeah, well, I think that's cooler than cool. How do you, do you think, think you're going? Uh, I'm trying my best. Yeah. <laughs> you're doing all How right. Do you think I'm you're going? doing no, no, okay. Yeah. You, you can work on a bit of improving, right. but you're okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. We'll talk about that later. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have got a confession to make. Your album, Feeler, was such a pivotal part of, mm. of my um, my single days. <laughs> right. Is that bad to say? It's like we're driving down a carload of girlfriends, playing your album mm. full board down the Great Ocean Road and just loving life. And I think there must be a lot of people out there that feel the same. Yeah, there, there is actually. It's, uh, it's amazing the people I come across um, that, I know that, that that album is um, really a monumental album for them. It's, it takes them back to a certain mm. time and uh, a place where that, I don't know, you know. Captured something, didn't yeah, it? And it's so did. relaxing. And a lot of people are saying Camacho is on the same trend as that one. Yeah, it is. Actually, there's, there's a, a, quite a few fans now that have got this album and have said, been saying, look, I didn't think that I would have another album of yours that I prefer more than feel but wow. this one is it. That's so a big call. It's a big call, yeah. I might have to download that it one. Me, <laughs> it took me six years to do this album wow. so and I, my goal was to make it as good as if, if not better than, than feel so that was yep. the challenge. Yep so not to rush it. Mm. Now uh, before we finish up I just want to ask how would you describe your happy place? My happy place? Um, I, it, that that in, includes family. Mm. Yeah, when I've got my family around me, that's my happy place. You know, Two boys. Yeah, 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 and my wife Mira. That's yeah. like that's, you know, I mean everyone, my sister and her kids and everyone. It's just like when you're around family, that's when you're happy. All Hanging your friends, out in you know. Byron Bay in the sunshine. Well, actually, you know what? Sometimes surfing on my own is pretty nice too. Yeah, right. Yeah. So like uh, meditation. Everyone, everyone needs their own little time, you know. Yeah. So um, when you're surfing, and it's a, you know, it's a nice day. It's clear. Yep. You know, that's pretty nice as that's well. That's happiness. That is, yeah. Thanks, Pete Murray. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate your time.